Now, our guest today was just 12 years old when her older brother, Louis Tomlinson, auditioned for The X Factor. The family's life changed forever from that moment, with One Direction going on to be one of the world's most famous boy bands. But nothing could have prepared the Tomlinson family for what was to come next, uh, with both their mother, Johanna, dying of leukaemia in 2016, followed by the unexpected passing of Sister Felicity in 2019. Um, and Lottie joins us now alongside Shadow Cabinet Minister for Mental Health, Dr Rosanna Allen Khan, um, both campaigning for better support for those grieving. Thank you very much uh, you for, for joining us Thank today. You so much. And, and Lottie, particularly when we can see that you have uh, <laughs> a new arrival Nearly coming. Nearly here. He's not, he's not far off. Pretty soon, yeah. yeah. Um, can I take you back to, to 2016, if you, if you don't mind? Um, you were only 17 years yeah. of age at, at that time. Mm -hmm. did, did you get any help dealing with the loss of your mum? Because it, it happened so quickly, didn't it, in the space of eight months, really, from diagnosis? Yeah, so it was really quick. And then, obviously, losing my mum at 18, such a heartbreaking, scary thing. Mm. And it was quite shocking that we were around a lot of health professionals and nothing really got offered to us. And then losing my sister two years later, um, the same again, nothing really got offered. So I kind of felt that it was like my responsibility for the family to kind of get some help and it made such a difference. So that's why now I want to try and encourage people to do that and kind of help there be a better system in place for people that do need the help. So how, how did you get through that? I mean, it's been a long hard journey but I feel like the therapy really helped me um, so that's why I want to help there be this pathway in place for people to be able to get that help but also leaning on family as well was a big one because I'm part of a really big family mm. um, so I feel like people need to be better educated on how to help as well Mm. Um, so that's why I work closely with Sue Ryder to try and improve on these things. Yeah. Did you, you say that you come from a big family, did you find that you all reacted to grief differently? Yeah, I think it was, everyone had their own reaction because everyone is different. Um, and obviously my sister didn't cope very well and then everything that happened with her happened. Um, and I feel things could have been different if she would have got the help. So that's why I'm quite passionate about trying to make that Difference. I think this is one of the problems, actually, because there is no recipe for grief and everybody yeah, absolutely. grieves at a different pace or in a yeah. different way. Yeah. And I'm wondering, did you actually grieve differently for your mum and your sister? Did you even find a difference there in yeah. how you coped? Yeah, I think that was really interesting to me because it was such a difference. Obviously, it's going to be different because it's two different relationships. You're kind of mourning like a mum relationship and then your sister's more of like a friendship relationship. Mm. Um, and then obviously the different ages, like there's a lot that comes into play. Um, so yeah, like there's not one size fits mm. all with grief and everyone kind of deals with, with it in their own way. Um, so yeah, it's, it's That important. could be difficult in a family too, kind of, if you're grieving in a particular way and other members of the family are grieving a different way that perhaps doesn't yeah. feel right doesn't to you, all. then, you know, you're all kind of crazy with it, aren't yeah. you? And, and that can cause tensions within the family. Yeah. And it's having the access, it sounds like you, you waited a little while. How, would, yeah. how long would you say would you wait until you felt even comfortable to be able to ask for help? Yeah, so I got recommended to wait three months after a loss, yes, and that's, that's kind of what they say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like that might be the time space where you really go into a really dark place that first three months. Mm -hmm. I feel like it should be kind of subject to what you think and feel. Um, but then I felt really lucky that I was even able to get this help because... It's like very expensive to go privately and get yeah. therapy, yeah. and then. And, it, and, and Rosanna, you lost your dad yes, last exactly. year, so yeah. tell, tell us a bit about what you're asking for at, at Parliament. Well, for me personally, I went through the grief process last year and really learned exactly what Lottie said, which that it isn't a one size fits all process. You know, some people need to sleep for a really long time. Some people, you know, drink more and there's no judgment on that. Some people like me throw themselves into exercise just to get away from the pain of it all. But as well as having gone through it myself, I've been a doctor for 17 years. So I've seen people go through the grief process. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. people expect you as a doctor in a way to be able to cope better. Mm, but I yeah. guess that's not the case. Yeah, but I think you also think that of yourself. I think until you've gone through it, you don't realise that all encompassing grief that you can go through and how it occupies every every fibre of your body. And I mm. think the, the biggest thing I learned was, and the thing that I say to my patients is, just be kind to yourself. Understand that no two days will be the same, mm. but it's important to allow yourself to feel however it is 
you need to feel to get through it. And also, you can have delayed grief as well. Mm. So I know and we is spoke it, about that Is earlier. it a bit of a postcode lottery at the moment as to what help you get? Yeah, so, for example, I mean, um, Sue Ryder did an incredible report that showed that 70% of people don't feel they have access to the support that they need. In my hospital, if somebody unfortunately dies, and because I'm an A&E doctor, we see that a lot, I feel as though I'm able to plug people into services, but some people don't find themselves going through a hospital. They might need to get help and support from their GP or their So how would you find the clear route? How would you do that? Well, I do think that we absolutely have to explore having a pathway that is set in stone where people know that they can access help. It isn't a one-size-fits-all. And we also know that culturally specific uh, information is really important because some people that may go to the church or the mosque or the synagogue are told, well, you know, it, this all happens, it's part and parcel of life. And you can find yourself feeling things that, that you, you know, almost feeling guilty for feeling grief. Yeah. So I think it's about saying that if there is a one-stop shop port of call where people know they can go to access the help and information that is culturally specific to them or their area or their community... But where would that be? That That's the thing I'm trying to catch on to. Is it a government set-up thing or is it a charity set-up thing? Where would that hub be? Well, personally, I, I think that what we should be campaigning for is to explore the opportunity to have a service that is centralised, mm. that is it's easily accessible, easy accessible for everyone. Mm. So wherever you are, you know that, that that is where you go. I think there is so much burden now placed on the charity yeah. sector. And we do have incredible charities like Sue Ryder, mm. but it shouldn't be the responsibility of of the charities to be the backstop for people. It has to be easily and also accessible. that people don't feel, oh, I've got to get help because I am struggling. Yeah. That there's some sense of failure. I mean, yeah. you know, grief is such a powerful emotion. It's not that you're failing no. if you don't deal it's, with it, that actually... It takes bravery it takes to accept that it, it does take strength. It's a unique experience, you know, grief... Mm -hmm opens up emotions that you are not even aware was there. Like, yeah. I, don't, I, ha I can't get the time back to ask you certain things. Yeah. Why am I feeling like this? Because it's so final. And I think what you're both saying, having something that takes in that moment where you're not even sure what you're going to feel, yeah. there's something there that you can access. Instead, instead of having to wait mm -hmm. or instead of having to get to that extra dark place, there's mm -hmm. something that is just there at that time to say, when you're ready, mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. is information. I think it's and about... Um, it's about the educating people on what you can do. Like, even the yes. GPs, they don't know where to send people. Mm. And I feel like yeah. having maybe, like, a leaflet or something yeah. where... Because there's a lot of grief cafes and things like that. I didn't even know they existed yeah. Yeah. before my work with Sue Ryder. Which doesn't cost money. No, to... some people just want to go and feel like yeah. they relate mm. to someone and they want to speak it through. Yeah. Even having, like, something that just lays it out to someone who comes in to the GP and says, I need help, mm. they can get given mm. this and just have a few options. I mean, I guess yeah. we are generally maybe not that good about speaking about about death yeah. and loss but and grief. I think we are getting better, and that's why what, what, you know, like what we're doing today on Lucy is so yeah. important, because people absolutely. will watch this and know that it's OK not to feel OK, mm. that there is help out there, yeah. but, but that the will for change is there as well. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming in. Really Thanks lovely to see thank both you of you. Thank you for having me. You're absolutely wonderful. Best of, thank of you. luck yeah. when you arrive. Thank you. Thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. She'll be sitting at home with your feet up, watching Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> <Lucy's laughs> <Lucy's laughs> if you've been affected by anything we've been talking about today, there are helplines available on our website.